Welcome, everybody. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Very excited. Moneyball hits theaters uh, tomorrow. The conversation is back about sort of the what the metrics of judging talent in baseball ought to be. It's a conversation that I believe is incredibly one-sided and that those who disagree with what was suggested in Michael Lewis's book, Moneyball, didn't really read it uh, because it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. And when you suggest that uh, that the money ball makes the argument that Billy Bean and the A's reinvented how general managing, how running a team is done. It's nonsense. That's, that's not what it says. Any notion that scouts should be ignored, that's not what the book said. It was an economics book. It was a book about money <laughs> uh, as applied to a team at an incredible competitive disadvantage, uh, which the A's are now at uh, even more so uh, than they were in 2001, 2002, 2003. The movie's really good. Uh, check out our review on uh, What the Flick with uh, Matt Hatchety and uh, Christy Lemire. I really enjoyed the film. I enjoy it more the farther I get away from it, but admittedly, I'm, I'm incredibly biased. Obviously, I'm, a, I'm an A's fan, a lifelong A's fan. I wore my A's hat to the screening, which was uh, pretty lame. Uh, but, uh, you know, I had to, man. It's just, I can't believe there's a movie that, that where the star of the movie is Billy frickin' Bean, and there's a Paul D. Podesta character, even if they pretend it's not Paul D. Podesta. And Philip Seymour Hoffman played Art Howe, for crying out loud. There's a, there's a shot of Greg Myers in it, throwing the ball on a third strike into right field, past Jason Giambi in game five. Uh, man, that game five in 2001, the A's and the Yankees, is hard to relive in any capacity, and it's there in the beginning of the movie. Horrible errors by Greg Myers and Eric Chavez, who obviously played nothing but great defense for years in Oakland. And a terrible error by uh, Jason Giambi. We made three gigantic errors in that game. I'd kind of forgotten. But anyway, it's a movie with Jeremy Giambi and Chad Bradford. And some baseball people are, are arguing with some little particulars in the movie about Billy Bean traveling across the country for a meeting with Mark Shapiro of the Cleveland Indians that he would have called him on the phone. Yeah, yeah. It's a movie, man. You got to change some stuff around. One of the biggest issues in the movie is a suggestion that after Jason Giambi leaves and after 2001, before the 02 season, one of the guys the A's wanted to replace him with was his brother Jeremy. I'm pretty sure that every A's fan recalls that Jeremy Giambi was on the 2001 A's team because, as I recall, he didn't slide. So that was a peculiar thing to uh, choose to do. But uh, again, part of the storyline, the idea of bringing in a guy like Jeremy Giambi, that was still true. The A's had just done it a year earlier. Anyway, I, I, I loved it. I, I, I thought, it, it, it. again, you don't have to know a lot about baseball. You don't have to know a lot about economics. But the idea that you had to rethink completely if you're the A's and that it caused a sort of sea change in thinking of baseball. That's true. Now teams blend scouting with the new with the with the metrics of statistics, with saber metrics. That's what's done now. That's how it is now. It, 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 if you don't believe me, just ask Brian Cashman, you know, the Yankees general manager. They changed. They were already changing. Other teams were doing it. The Red Sox were already looking at it then. And Theo Epstein, when uh, Billy Bean turned down the job, Theo Epstein got the job in Boston. Billy Bean turned it down. Theo Epstein sort of was an admirer of Bean's. Again, it, it, now we look at the stats and we blend them with scouting. That's how competent teams run. But obviously, they don't just throw money away and they don't do things like say, oh, well, he looks like a ball player. He's a five-tool player. Those quotes, those, those days are gone. Uh, you can smell a bad deal more quickly than before. Uh, one of the things that Brian Cashman said that, uh, uh, that I liked, he said, the old school guys used to say, this guy looks good in a uniform. You don't hear that anymore. Owners should feel good about why they're spending mother money other than he looks good in a uniform. So again, the A's were sort of at the forefront of rethinking how teams should be run and how money should be spent. That's really all the movie suggests. It does not mention uh, three guys really in the movie much, uh, Tim Hudson, Mark Mulder, Barry Cito. They started 109 games in 2002. They won 57 of them. ERA of just over three, a whip under 1.2. Yeah, they played a significant role. Everybody knows that. We got it. So calm down and stop suggesting that the, the, the movie and the book suggest that the A's rethought everything and it really had to do with these pitchers. It's not what it's, and Miguel Tejada. That's not, that's not what the movie's about. It's not in any way. It's about rethinking things and thinking of them in a new way, and it does it very well, and you should check it out. I obviously uh, freaking loved it because, again, you have a character named Chad Bradford in the movie. Moment I never thought would happen. Um, so uh, did you see it? Did you get to that screening, Greg? I did. You did. You were, were you late? 
Yes. A little bit. Yeah. I, I was that dick who walked in late and sat in the front row. Did you like it? I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was really, really good. Yeah. I liked it a lot. Well, you should read the book, because the book obviously goes into a lot more detail. Um, and the book's great, and you'll see why it made people so mad, because it just challenges the way people think. And again, most of the people who criticize the book, I, I, I would literally, I'd bet thousands of dollars that 19 out of every 20 people who hate the book didn't read it. Because it, it just doesn't say what they claim that it says.